have a very sensitive nose, which is... I've smelled a lot of perfume. I've smelled the... In my nose, almond scents. And therefore, I... And therefore... And therefore... Hello, good people of the internet. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who haven't been here before, hi, my name is Alna, and I hope that you stick around. Today's video is all about perfume dupes. We all know what they are, right? Perfumes that are similar to each other, maybe have the same scent profile. Well, being a perfume enthusiast, a fragrance collector, and also having worked with perfume professionally for the last few years, I've smelt a few perfumes. I also have a very sensitive nose, which means that I can easily detect if a fragrance is similar to another. As we all know, scents along with music are memory triggers, and therefore I also can easily associate a scent to another. I've gone through my collection and found some so-called dupes. So let's talk about it. So the first pair up was mentioned in my previous video, Givenchy La Tardin and La Taffa Fakar Rose. They both have that woody, warm, spicy quality to them. Fakar is actually a little more woody in the opening before it settles into a sweeter profile. My La Tardin remains woody and also a little musky in the dry down, but they're still Dupes. Dupes. Another pairing, well actually a family, like I mentioned in the video I did all about skin scents, are the Zadig and Voltaire. This is her undressed with Maison Lancôme, Jasmin Marcipin, and a little bit of Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Now what's funny about this is when you look at the notes, you'll never guess that these were similar as they have very few notes in common. And if I were to pick one that is more similar to Undressed than the other, it would be Maison Lancôme, Jasmin Marcipan. Both of these have the sandalwood, they also have the musk to them. I think the reason why I pick up on a little Lost Cherry in This Is Her Undressed is because of the almond that is in the Lost Cherry. And I think it's the skin note in This Is Her Undressed that is basically a musky note that does it so that I pick up on a little Lost Cherry because I feel like that skin note has this almond feel to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna interject right here. I want to clarify that Maison Lancôme Jasmin Marcipan also contains almond, but this is almond wood, and it's the almond in combination with the cherry notes in Lost Cherry that does so that I pick up on Lost Cherry in this. This is on her undressed. Carry on. But if you're looking for a dupe for Maison Lancôme Jasmin Marcipan, you got Zadig and Voltaire, This Is Her Undressed. Now over to a duo that was actually launched in the same year, Abercrombie and Fitch, Authentic Night, and Carolina Herrera, Good Girl Supreme. Authentic Night is sweet and fruity, and it also has that black currant note that is very prominent in the opening, but it still lingers in the dry down as it settles into a more woody profile, but it still has that sweetness from the black currant. Then you have Good Girl Supreme, which also has that very prominent black currant in the opening, but it settles into a little more woody profile, but still has that sweetness to it. They both were launched in 2020, and thinking back, I actually think that was the year of sweet and fruity floral scents. Even though in Good Girl Supreme, the note says forest fruits, the black currant is very prominent. They're both sweet, they're both fruity, and they both have that prominent black currant sweetness that follows into the dry down into a more woody profile. So if you're looking for a dupe for Carolina Herrera, Good Girl Supreme, go for Abercrombie & Fitch, Authentic Night. Sticking with the sweet theme, the next pair of dupes are the Dolce by Rosie Jane and La Rive Vanilla Touch. Dolce is a fairly new addition to my collection. And when I got her, I realized that, huh, this is not an unfamiliar smell. I've smelled this before. And that's when I realized that it was actually similar to La Rive Vanilla Touch. Now Vanilla Touch has a more floral, almondy, almost waxy feel to it. And I think because it has the most going on when it comes to notes, it's because of the chaos with the notes that it becomes a little more subdued. And because of the chocolate that is in Dolce, it gives that a little more sweeter quality to it. But still, they're pretty damn similar. 
Now Radiant Nectar has quickly become one of my favorite perfumes because like I mentioned in the video that I did all about skin scents, to me this is baby smell in a bottle. It's sweet, it's fruity, and it's also a little mystical because it does make you wonder is it perfume or do you just smell that good? Then we have Miss Grande with God is a Woman. They actually have somewhat of the same body, so it's not surprising that they are, smell similarly. I actually wore a God is a Woman the other day and someone was like, oh, you're wearing Radiant Nectar. No, I wasn't. I was wearing God is a Woman. Now, God is a Woman has vanilla in it that makes it a little more sweet. And Radiant Nectar has a more fresh feel to it. They're both great and both wonderful skin scents. Will I talk about this perfume at every chance I get? Yes. Yes, I will. I've heard people say that Brazilian Crush Cheriosa 68 is a dupe for Baccarat Rouge. Now, I've actually never smelled Baccarat Rouge. A what? So I can't really say. But what I can say is that Miss 68 over here is Terrain in a body mist. They both have vanilla and jasmine and they both have that fruitiness to them right off the bat. In the dry down though, Terre becomes a little more woody, naturally because of the woody notes, but still 68 is Terre in a body mist and yes, I do wear these together. Now moving on to some dupes that will be honorable mentions because I only have one of the pair of the dupes. Back in 2019, I believe NARS celebrated their 25th anniversary and that's when Audacious was released as a celebratory limited edition perfume. Two years ago in 2021, I smelled it for the first time and I fell instantly in love. I didn't really feel like I could spend the money on it then and there. I have regretted it ever since, since it was a limited edition and I haven't been able to find it since. And then a year ago, I got a travel size of the Boom Dia Bright cream that is the same smell as number 40 here. I thought to myself, oh, it smelled so good and it smelled familiar and I was like, where have I smelled this before? And that's when it clicked. This is audacious. Even though they have different bodies, they both have that warm, woody, and musky dry down, but also that little fruity aspect to them. Even though there are no fruits in Audacious, it has frangipani, which is a sweeter, fruity, floral note that can somewhat compare to the plum and the cassis that is in Chiros 40. So if any representative from NARS by any chance sees this video, can you please have Audacious do a comeback. I really regret not getting it when I had it in my hands. It's funny because there are some perfumes that I've just steered clear of for one reason or the other and just made up in my mind that it doesn't suit me without really giving them a chance. And Giorgio Armani's C and its flanker Passione are such scents. But on the C Passione has vanilla woody notes and jasmine. I know, I know. But I do have a soft spot for anything Greek and Greece has a special place in my heart. So does the brand Gores. And it was while I was browsing this brand, I came across Midnight Dahlia. It was seductive, it was warm and had that fruitiness to it. So I was sold. A couple of days after I got it, I had some friends over and one of them was like, that smells exactly like Giorgio Armani si Passione. What? But yeah, she's right, it does. They're both warm and have that sweet gourmand feel to them, so it's safe to say I've changed my mind on uh, Giorgio Armani Si Passione. Now one scent that I have been giving a chance but just can't wrap my nose around is Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf. Not a fan of it on myself and not too big of a fan of it on others either. Azul de Janeiro, After Hours, is what Flower Bomb wishes it was. Will I wear After Hours? Probably not. Will it sit in my collection as a keepsake? Most likely. Me, Flower Bomb is a bit too edgy. It also has too much spice to it. But After Hours is, is a bit more subdued with the caramel and the whipped cream note, which makes it a little more wearable and bearable in my nose. And this is not to bash on anyone who uses Flower Bomb. And for those who do, using this with Flower Bomb probably is a winning duo. So that was it for today's video and I really hope that you liked it. And if you did, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you liked me, then please subscribe. And um, if you have any suggestions on any type of videos that I can do, then please comment down below. 
and until next time, bye!